All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Eggleston, and I run Course Report, which is a resource for students who are choosing a coding boot camp. If you haven't used Course Report yet, this is my one shameless plug. I do it in all of our videos. Um, you can use our directory to find schools that fit your learning style. You can check out our blog for interviews with students and instructors and founders from boot camps around the world. Um, plus, we have application tips, virtual classroom tours, and so much more. And over the past six months, uh, as so many boot camps have been transitioning online, we've been sharing these tours of online classrooms to help you do your research. And today, David Jordan from Flatiron School is here to walk us through the Flatiron School online classroom experience. Thanks so much for being here, David. Thank you so much for having me. So we will get more into this with David, but um, Flatiron School is a bit different than some of the other schools that are uh, kind of hustling to get online in 2020 uh, because they've actually offered a remote version of their immersive coding bootcamp since 2016, 2017, uh, a few years now. And because of COVID-19, Flatiron School has moved entirely online, like a lot of schools, but there's still this kind of culture in each of the campuses. So David is going to walk us through the differences between Flatiron School online versus in person. Um, he's gonna give us a little uh, virtual sneak peek of the Flatiron School online classroom. And uh, he's gonna share some advice for students who are looking for an online boot camp and like really looking for that career change when they graduate. So David, thank you so much for being here. I have a ton of questions for you, but I want to start by asking about what is actually available to students right now from Flatiron School. So um, you'll have had this online campus for several years, but how has Flatiron School reacted to COVID-19? Are all classes now remote? Yeah, I think, you know, similar to schools and, and businesses worldwide, <laughs> we have moved all of our operations virtual, uh, given the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you mentioned, you know, pre-pandemic, Flatiron already did have an online track that allowed folks to study full-time, asynchronously, sort of going at their own pace or part-time um, asynchronously sort of going at their own pace. And so uh, we also had a campus option where students could report to a brick and mortar physical location and learn in person if they you know, appreciated that, that type of in-person community and structure. And we have campuses all across the country with uh, our you know, campus here in New York being our sort of original flagship campus. Uh, but all of those operations went virtual with the onset of the pandemic. And I think we were really set up to make that transition smoothly, given that pre-pandemic, we already had so much experience with how to deliver this content virtually. Um, so, you know, at this point in time, we really have, you know, many options for prospective students. They can do that part-time program if they're juggling, you know, a job or family care. They can do that full-time asynchronous program if they like the independence of just sort of learning on their, you know, more independently, or they can still attend our, you know, New York campus in a virtual environment. And that's, you know, the part of the program I oversee and, and I'm eager to share more about. Well, New York City is where Flatiron School began. Um, so y'all have now expanded, like you were saying, to a ton of other cities and obviously online, but what do you think still sets the New York campus apart? Um, does it still feel like New York, even though you're teaching online? It does, it does. You know, it's, it's different. Uh, I think we've all learned a lot about what it means to work, to learn, to connect with family in a virtual format. So it's different, but I think, you know, what hasn't changed is our commitment to our students and our commitment to New York City. Uh, and we're just so excited to, you know, even in the midst of this really unprecedented year, uh, be a vehicle in which students in New York are able to change their lives through education, especially given, you know, how many folks' careers were impacted by the pandemic and might be open to considering a career switch into technology. 
Um, and, and, you know, as you said, this is where it all began for Flatiron. So we have a very large alumni network in the city, active in the tech, um, in the tech scene, in meetups, in different groups. And so, you know, you get plugged into that community in joining the New York campus, even in our virtual format. And so you mentioned that, so if folks want the uh, in-person kind of experience, that synchronous learning experience where you're waking up at, you know, 9 a.m. signing on and, and like leaving the classroom at, you know, in the evening, then they would choose this kind of like campus, uh, like the New York campus, as opposed to the asynchronous online option. Um, but so what does that mean? Are, are, are students like attending class full time, nine to five? What does a student's day look like? Yeah, that's a great question. So similar to what it would look like if they were reporting to our campus on, you know, 11 Broadway in, in Lower Manhattan, they have a stand up with their team at or with their cohort of students at 9am. Um, and they, you know, learn what the objectives are for the day, you know, what types of lectures they'll be attending, um, group work, pair programming, you know, a, a whole suite of potential activities to move through that day's objectives. And they do that, you know, with the help, the community, the accountability, uh, the companionship of a group of fellow New Yorkers that are also embarked on this experience, um, as well as a team of faculty that are here to support them. Uh, so they'll have lots of synchronous touch points through the day and then close with a stand down sometime around, um, you know, 5 or, or 5.30 p.m. And so that runs five days a week, um, you know, you know, nine to five, nine to six, and then outside of that, there might be some additional homework or, or projects to work on in, in their spare time. So it very much emulates the level of intensity and rigor that you would be getting from an in-person boot camp. Um, and so it's, it's a really good op option for folks that you know, aren't currently working uh, and are able to sort of dedicate that structured time to, to this rigorous of a program. And what kinds of tools are y'all using now in order to like create that community um, in terms of teaching, uh, people being able to collaborate with each other as like classmates, what are y'all using? Yeah, we, ha we have a variety of tools and structures as well as I would say just an overall institutional culture that I all think drive us in that way. In terms of tools, some of them I'm sure will be in incredibly familiar to folks uh, in this day and age. We use Zoom and Slack vociferously. They're, they're really staples in our program. We also use Canvas as our learning management uh, platform. And those tools are, are used in a variety of structures, right? So we have stand-ups, we have stand-downs, we have lecture time, uh, pair programming, small group time. So all of these structures are the moments where we build that community, that companionship, that, that those collegial relationships that last, you know, long after graduation. Uh, and then I think, you know, sort of above that is this culture of um, believing in the potential of all of our students to succeed and, and change their lives through education. So I think that culture also is sort of the glue that holds together those different structures where we bring our students together to empower each other, to, to help each other, to overcome barriers uh, as they move through the 15 week course uh, to, to change their career. I feel like I've been to so many events at 11 Broadway, like y'all are, you know, you host a ton of, of events in the office when, when the office was open or in the classroom. So how do y'all ensure that those remote students are not missing out on anything that uh, the in-person students we're getting, you know, in 2019. Are you doing like demo day online? And yes, yes, okay. absolutely. So all of those structures, whether it's, you know, things like demo days or science fairs, alumni panels, um, career services talks, all of that is still occurring in a virtual format. And I think, you know, one silver lining of this pandemic is given that so much of our activity is happening online there's actually often more programming that is available to students given that all they have to do is, is log in from their computers. So I think that it, in some ways that's enhanced the, the, the volume of um, options for them to engage and, and learn more, uh, support each other more and, and just 
really um, build that community. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of the week, we sort of end with what we call Feelings Friday, which is an opportunity to really build that cohesive cohort unit. A, a lot of our students, given that, you know, they're making a career change, might come in with uh, a sense of imposter syndrome or, uh, you know, self-doubt about whether they can make it in this industry. And so, you know, we really seek to end the week with r a really close sense of community, even though it's virtual. Um, and talk through how folks are feeling, how they can support each other. It's interesting that you point out that students can actually attend more community events because they're doing those online. Um, on the other hand, like what kinds of challenges do you see folks facing right now these days? And what's your advice to someone who is about to embark on this kind of online remote learning experience? Yeah, I think, you know, the, the in-person experience is, is incredibly challenging. The rigor of, of moving through the curriculum in 15 weeks, that challenge exists in the virtual campus experience as well. Uh, and, and there's the additional um, risk of, you know, Zoom fatigue um, and just all of the, the sort of um, exhaustion that can come from being in front of a screen all day. Uh, so we really, you know, focus on, on the community aspect and the, the building of really deep bonds between um, cohort mates. You know, every mod, their work, every module or, or phase, they're working with a different partner on a project, building relationships across the cohort. Uh, then we have campus leads that are focused on building non-technical community. Um, and those, you know, human connections, whether it's through virtual yoga events or happy hours, you know, all the types of, of social activities we would have on campus, really replicating those in a virtual environment as well. Um, so I think both, you know, both from the academic lens with panels, career talks, demos, but then also the more socio-emotional part of, of just human to human connection. Those are, are structures we've put in place to help alleviate the, the stress and anxiety and challenges that come in any boot camp experience and one that can be you know particularly challenging when you're doing it um, alone from home. I imagine that a lot of those feelings Fridays are really focused on the experience of being remote. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's a nice resource to have. Yeah. And additionally, you know, I know these are stressful times. We also have a student assistance program. Um, which is um, a counseling service that students can call into to get free confidential counseling if, you know, at any point throughout the program they're, they're feeling like they would, you know, want additional mental health resources as well. So I'm curious, now that y'all have been doing this for, I mean, it's been about eight months, um, just kind of looking back, do you see that admission standards have, have changed? Um, I'm assuming not in a huge drastic way, but like, do you look for different qualities in a student who's applying for the, the remote version of, of Flatiron School? Do they have to have like different qualifications or just kind of different qualities to really succeed at Flatiron? No, I think that, you know, the same qualities that would, that would allow a student to be successful in a campus program, those same qualities um, are, are important in this, you know, synchronous virtual learning as well. I think it's really more about expectation setting than it is around anything intrinsic to the applicant. I think it's really recognizing what kind of a learner you are, what, how you create community, how you can remain engaged and, you know, um, not turn off your camera and play on your phone when you're in a lecture or an online happy hour, but really stay engaged in a virtual setting. So we've really seen uh, it key to, to set those expectations early on and really help applicants and, and new students think through how they're going to show up and how they're going to engage in this format to make the most out of the experience. That makes sense. Um, you mentioned campus leads and the student assistance team. Um, I want to talk about instructors a little bit. What kind of support can students expect from instructors? Are they getting to know them and getting the support that they would in, in the normal in-person classroom? Yes, our instructors are incredible. They are passionate and, and really focused on the student experience and helping students reach, you know, their goals, which is, you know, acquiring a job in this, in this industry. Uh, and, and so we uh, at Flatiron, 
maintain, you know, and Flatiron New York have a large team of faculty that, that are really dedicated to assisting students in building self-efficacy in their own ability to learn and problem solve and also collaborate and work with peers. Um, so often faculty, you know, will not, they will not give you the answer if, if you're a student uh, approaching them with a the question. They'll, they'll really um, look through your thinking and, you know, what have you done already to approach this problem so that they can help you, you know, uh, build those, those problem solving reflexes as you approach, um, you know, whatever, whatever discipline it is you're studying. Uh, and we call that our, our personal empowerment protocol, which is, you know, we're here to help you, but we're going to help you build the, the muscle memory and the right instincts on how to approach these, these issues and also how to work together, you know, when in the future they join, you know, say a software engineering team, it's going to be a lot of, of group work, a lot of pair programming and how can we build that within the cohort. Okay, so they've got these, they have access to, you know, live instructors. Um, and it, I feel like now that so many schools are online and then we also have these, uh, you know, all of these kind of self-guided online resources mm -hmm. that are super low cost or even free. Uh, folks who are who are doing this research between boot camps can have some trouble making that distinction. So maybe you could just tell us like very straightforward how is Flatiron School um, New York or any of the campuses different from one of the free self-guided, you know, learn to code uh, resources like a Code Academy or a Udemy? Yeah, definitely. And, and first of all, you know, I think any resource um, online that, that can help you achieve your goals, your professional goals is, is great and, and a tool that, that um, can be utilized. I think what makes the power of, of synchronous live faculty so useful is how they can guide our students um, and build community, build camaraderie, and really serve there as um, a resource and inspiration and, and a guide. I think, you know, um, many of them have worked in the field. They have deep um, uh, industry expertise and can bring that expertise to the classroom. Um, Others of them, you know, some of our coaches, we call them, they're, re they're often recent grads that are really there to do like one-on-one -on -one support with students. And, and they've, they've gone through this journey before, so they can serve as, um, you know, great advisors to our students on, on how to learn the material. Um, so I think, you know, there's, there's certainly lots of paths that students could take in, in how they want to acquire some of this technical knowledge. I think the power of of live faculty that, that can guide a synchronous cohort through the material really allows for additional insights into the industry, um, more specialized support, and really showing um, how to work as a team, which is so critical once you get into the workforce. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of the workforce, I feel like that's a huge part of Flatiron School and a lot of these immersive boot camps um, is that they're very much for career changers. And the goal when you graduate is to actually get a job in tech. So um, New York City is obviously a very well-known <laughs> tech hub. Um, but what are y'all seeing right now in, in 2020? What does the New York tech scene look like for a boot camp grad? Yeah, so we are thrilled that every week we have grads uh, securing jobs in the tech field. Um, New York is a massive hub of, of tech jobs, um, second only to Silicon Valley. Um, and there's lots of open jobs in tech here in the city, even though, you know, big picture, the job market looks a little, a little scary at times given the, the pandemic we are seeing every week our, our grad securing jobs. So we think that this is, you know, a great time for, for folks to consider a, a career change, um, especially given that um, so many roles in the tech sector um, are, are slightly more pandemic proof. They're, they're roles that, that are not going away. Um, they're, they're critical um, in, you know, startups, big companies across all industries. Um, and there's a lot of them open here in New York and, and our alumni are, are plugged into those, those, those sectors. Yeah, the alumni network is a huge part of that. I mean, I think of New York as being, or maybe pre-pandemic as being, you know, the jobs being in startups and a lot of like FinTech. Um, is, has that stayed pretty 
consistent in 2020, like the actual industries? Yeah, you know, it, the job market has, has changed, I think, in, in some ways as a result of the pandemic. What we're seeing on the ground at this point, though, is, is our job seekers continuing to get jobs sort of across um, industries, um, both from large established companies all the way down to, to very small startups. Um, so that's exciting to see. Uh, and we're confident that, you know, um, we will continue to, our, our grads will continue to achieve that um, with the help of our, our robust career services team. Is it just like, is it taking longer for people to get jobs or has there been literally like no change? Since? You know, I, early in the pandemic, I think mm -hmm. in, in March and April, there definitely was, I think um, that was, those were probably the two most challenging months. Uh, at this point, we're seeing, uh, you know, strong job placement rates. Um, so I think the nature of job searches have, has changed a little bit, but we're still very confident that, that there are a lot of open jobs that, that need great talent in New York. I think, I think one thing that has changed is that applicant pool has, has grown um, with, with many folks out of work. So uh, I think that's, that's where the alumni network um, does play an important role as well as the fact that we have relationships with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of employers, um, building those connections, building our brand, letting employers know, you know, the, the caliber of students coming out of our program uh, to ease them in, in their job search. Do you expect, or are you seeing most students remaining in New York and like looking for jobs in New York? Or now that the nature of work is just a little bit more remote, um, pushing towards that way. Uh, are you seeing people getting jobs in other cities or even moving away from New York when they graduate? What are y'all seeing? You know, at this point, still the majority of folks that, that come to Flatiron New York are remaining in the city. Although we've also seen um, sort of pre-pandemic in particular folks moving to New York to study at Flatiron and then perhaps going elsewhere. Um, but for the most part, our students that are from New York are choosing to stay in New York. Uh, although I also know that that you know people have, some some folks have moved elsewhere as a result of the pandemic. So I think um, there is some of that as well. Some kind of influx and outflux. That's the word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned this kind of influx of students and and applicants, especially in New York. I feel like where the service industry is so. Um, huge and has really been affected by by COVID nineteen. I I imagine that um, you know there are more folks who are looking for that career change. I kind I I know because of the nature of working with course report. Um, but the the fact of the matter is like someone can't you know a complete beginner can't just start at Flatiron School New York tomorrow right um so what kind of like resources or even maybe online meetups that have come about in the last few months um do you recommend for a beginner who wants to break into tech in new york right now yeah so i think there are a ton of virtual meetups that are available out there and i think those are a great way to sort of put your toe in the water and get a sense of you know is this uh, a sector that, that interests you? Is this something that, that you can see yourself joining this type of, of professional community? There's also lots of just Slack communities that you can you know, join and, and see the chatter going on there, see if it's, it feels right to you. Um, and you know, on our website, um, flatironschool.com backslash events, there's also just a long list of Event, free events that you can join to, you know, hear from our faculty, um, join a, 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 a sort of Q&A with our admissions team, um, and really learn more about, you know, the sector more broadly, Flatiron in particular, and, and sort of figure out what's right for you. That sounds great. Well, okay, so you, I feel like you've kind of answered this question throughout our, our Q&A, um, but why is this moment, like right now, a good time for someone to go to a coding boot camp and make that career change into tech? I feel like this is the number one question that we get now is like, should I just wait until things like, quote unquote, go back to normal? 
whatever that means? Um, or like, is this even a good time to do this career change? Yeah. So in my mind, there's never a bad time to enter the tech field. Um, so I think that's, that's sort of my, my headline uh, answer there. These skills will always be in demand, especially in New York that has just so many different sectors that depend on technology. Um, to, to drill down and be a little bit more specific though to your question about in this moment in particular when so much seems uncertain, um, you know, the tech sector is a, a relatively pandemic proof sector. Um, and these are also jobs that tend to be friendly to remote work, uh, you know, as you said, jobs that were once sort of a staple in New York, whether it's the service sector, entertainment, retail, so many of those have unfortunately had to be put on ice for the indefinite future. Uh, and in 15 weeks, you know, through, through this synchronous, highly structured community driven boot camp with professionals that have done this journey themselves, you can acquire the skills to that will set you up for, you know, a, a, a job, uh, an industry that has so many openings across so many different sectors that you know remain open even in spite of of the the COVID pandemic, um, and and like I said at the beginning, you know we offer many different types of programs, knowing that there's many different types of students. So we have synchronous, which I've largely been speaking to, but we also have asynchronous. Um, we have full time, but we also have part time if folks have other commitments, uh, especially given the unusual nature of this year. So, um, you know, lots more information is available on our website, lots of events that can help you sort of determine which of those various routes might be right for you. Um, but I think the headline is there's never a bad time to enter tech. Well, I think that is a great place to end. So thank you so much, David, for joining and walking us through the Flatiron School remote experience. Um, and I feel like you shared such great advice for anyone who's going through an online boot camp and looking for that career change when they graduate. Um, and thank you so much for joining. Uh, so let us know in the comments which boot camp you'd like to see a virtual classroom walkthrough with next. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, David. Thank you. Cool.